Now, Gary Lineker said he is delighted to return to presenting Match of the Day after the woke workers at the B went on strike at the weekend, leaving football fans with limited coverage. So-called pundits and full-time virtue singlers Alan Scherer, Ian Wright, Jermaine Janus and Alex Scott led the walkout, forming a laughable picket line of multi-millionaire moaners. But a brave few defied the BBC's woke mob rule as Five Live presenters Ian Dennis, Alistair Bruce Ball and John Murray showed up to do their jobs paid for, let's remember, by us, the British taxpayer. So, Calvin, should Tim Davey uh, actually sack the folk who refused to turn up to work uh, rather than turn them all into political martyrs like he has done? It's a very good idea. The minute he does it, of course... Lineker will pay back them walking out on strike, mm. and so then they'll be back to square one again. So he's lost control. Uh, Tim Davies has completely lost control, and the issue is Tim Davies is going to have to go. He got this completely wrong. Why he hadn't done his homework, hadn't looked at the contractual positions of everybody, hadn't had a good lawyer look at them beforehand. He said, out you go, and then legs it himself to the United States. You tell me a major manager in a massive crisis is, wants to be out of the country. The guy is absolutely hopeless. Unfortunately, Lineker has wiped the floor with the BBC management. They He's will played be... them. Huh? He's played them. He's gamed them. Because the, 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 the thing is, Calvin, is that Tim Davey, when he took the job, said that he was putting impartiality at the heart of his mission to reform the BBC. Well, that's out the window now. That's out the window because this review, it's got an assured result. The assured result is it's going to water down the impartiality provisions. Well, I, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. I certainly hope you're, you're not right. But what is clear is that nobody is now running... We give £159 each. It's got, got revenues of three and a half billion quid, all our money. If this is how it's run in the little bit that we do see... What else is going on all the time, which is completely... So, the BBC, so why don't we do what makes sense? Why don't we go to subscription? Because if yeah, we go to subscription, then you can decide whether you mind the fact that um, uh, Lineker has these views. It doesn't matter to you. At the moment, I am forced to do it or I go to jail. Therefore, I do mind what is said through BBC fame. And the other issue, surely for Lineker's sake, he can go off and go and he can go and work for a load of other people. Why doesn't he do that and actually do the BBC a favour? There is no doubt, I listen to the BBC radio quite a lot. So I listen to the Today programme, I've listened to it for 40 years. It is more impartial today. Poor yeah, poor me. Well, actually, a lot of people feel that, but not necessarily about the BBC. I, I, it is more impartial today than it has ever been. So he is having an effect. These guys, because they're sport, they think they can go like that to the public. They can't. There will be ramifications for this. And I think Shearer, Wright and the rest of them should all move on. And well, the people you say it's more impartial than it's ever been. They still, they still had a hard left Brit turned American presenter on this morning describing Donald Trump as insane with no pushback uh, from Michelle Hussein it, during the interview. So I know what you're saying, that they're making an effort. But fundamentally, what we've learned over the week in yeah. Calvin Wright is that all of these folk think the same. They are all part of the same uh, North London Champagne Socialist set. They have disdain for any folk who believe that actually open borders is not sustainable for a country it, it, like it, the it's UK. It's certainly true. Uh, to give the credit to Suella Bravavan, who has who has done some stunning stuff over the last yeah. week. And there are big issues coming down the track, I suspect, from a Hindu Home Secretary with a Muslim agitated crowd out there. So we're going to see more Kettlethorpe High yeah. in Wakefield coming out at, at us. But she was powerful in the House tonight. She was powerful tonight, a brilliant speech tonight, a great piece in the Times today, mm -hmm. and laying down a change. Now, the, you're right, you're not going to hear a lot of the Braverman position are on the radio, but you can hear it somewhere else. You mm -hmm. can hear it here. Yeah. You can yeah. hear it and on GB exactly. News Radio. And, and, and by the way, I am... 
I think I've been absolutely infuri infuriated over the past two weeks with this fig leaf argument that's been going around that this is somehow an issue of freedom of speech. Nothing, to, nothing do to do with that. He signed a contract, Calvin, yeah. and he knew that by right. signing that contract, he was taking £1.3 million pounds from us. Yeah. Part of that £1.3 million pounds yeah. means he has to be impartial. End of story. I don't mind if he leaves yeah. the BBC and right. tweets whatever okay, he wants but about here's the, the rub on it. It's quite clear when the lawyers got into it that that contract was not as strong as they thought it was. Mm. So what was? why didn't somebody check that? before doing the suspension. So my criticism is twofold. One towards Lineker, why doesn't he just go and work somewhere else? Yeah. He can have as much free speech as he likes. And he'll make more money. But, yeah, make, and yeah. he can tweet that the Tories are Nazis all day long Absolutely. and none of us will give a damn. Absolutely. Just like we don't give a damn about the Emily Maitlis And that's, and that's why he doesn't day. want to quit, by the way. Yeah. But on the other side, then you've got, some, you've got Tim Davey, who probably makes four or five hundred grand a year, supposed to be the big panjandrum, he's the great future, came from the commercial side of the BBC, he knows about money, right? Completely cocks it up. So he shouldn't hang around. We need somebody vile to go in there. Who have you got? I've offered myself twice, and you know I've been <laughs> I've been rejected. I felt I was even rejected by GB News. That's how tough I am. But no, but seriously, there has to be a change. There has to be a change. And what's going to happen now is that Sharp, the chairman, who should never have been elected, should never have been put in position anyway as the chairman, he's likely to get yeah. the elbow. So you're going to be in the bizarre position of, of the chairman being fired and Lina could yeah. carry on standing there. Yeah, I, I, but again. And I'm not saying this to defend Richard Sharp at all, but the conflation of the two positions, Lineker's and Sharp, is so intellectually dishonest. Yeah. You know, the BBC chairman position, as you well know, has always been a party political position. It is a political appointment under Blair. He put an absolute Labour multi-millionaires to that job. And, I mean... Goodness me, under Blair, Greg Dyke, you know, who was a paid up member of the Labour Party until the day he became director general, took the job and there was no issue with that. So the two things are completely separate. No, but let, no, let's be honest about it. <laughs> we didn't have a chairman who before arranged for 800 grand no. to go towards, no. to, to, towards no, the they, Prime Minister who then gave they, him the but job. They were, accused, they were accused of being Labour stooges. They were. And they were paid up members they of were, the Labour Party. That is true. You know, it is a political appointment, the chairman of the the BBC and okay. being a presenter on the BBC. Okay, when we meet next thing. week, or on Thursday actually, tell me, will Sharp still be there? Well, I think they're going to wait for this review to uh, to come through. Yeah. But <laughs> Would you bet on it? No, absolutely not. The mood music from Sunak, uh, who, by the way, is throwing an old mate under the bus because he used to work for him, didn't he, at a bank we used to know yeah, him, yeah. at least a bank. The mood music coming from Sunak is, no, this man's going to go. Got,